This is a business phone. And that business is show business, as in lights, camera, and action. So you can take a compliment, right? I will. So if, I say, if I say that this is my favorite of your movies, you're not going to be like, what the fuck was wrong with Jersey Girl? No, that's the beauty of, of having, uh, like, I only got one kid in real life. But the beauty of having multiple kids is, you know, one could be somebody's favorite, one could be another's, one could be yours and stuff. <laughs> I love all the movies I make equally, but I, it's not like I'm like, hey man, if you didn't like the last one, fuck you. You like any of them, you got my heart, man. But this one, it, it, you know, especially has my heart too. Uh, so people that like this movie, I'm very dialed in on. I, I was so worried that nobody would go for this flick. I was like, oh, it's so soft and nothing edgy <laughs> happens in it. And it's not you know, as funny as like one of my other movies because nobody curses. And I've been so delighted to be fucking wrong. I mean, it's baffling because I'm like, maybe I don't know what I'm doing anymore because I didn't know if anyone would go for the flick. And, and this one they went for more than anything else I've done recently. So that means the absolute world. Your reaction, man, that means everything to me. You're, you're, you're following your heart. And that's what you, know, you were following your heart when you did Clerks. You were following your heart when you did Red State. You're following your heart now. Yeah. And sometimes um, people can go further with you on the journey. Um, and in this case, a lot of people are going, well, it's because it's not, you don't have to see three or four other movies to appreciate it. And anybody could just walk in on this flick. And I'm like, yeah, I can, I can absolutely see that. It's incredibly user-friendly. Anybody can pick it up. You don't have to know anything about it ahead of time. You don't have to have enjoyed my previous work to get in on it. But if you know my previous work, not just the movies, but also the podcast, all oh, the movies just soaked in Kevin Smith. <laughs> <laughs> right. So I know the whole saga of, of emo Kev and like the, the history of that phrase. Tell me about tell me about the song. Did does did Bear come to you with the song? Do you commission Bear? What's so, the what's that process? So the I'd worked with Bear on uh, the score for Masters of the Universe. He did both seasons of Masters of the Universe with us. And you know, those are big Paz, Basil uh, Polidorus type Gonan scores, big action scores. So he wrote me, I guess, like after the piece in the trades were like, hey, they're going to go make the 430 movie. And he texted me and he was just like, hey, man, can I score that? And I was like, we don't have any money, dude. This is a low budget movie. He's going, I don't care. I, I got an 80s score in me. I've always wanted to do it. So I was like, all right, I respect the passion. Go for it. So the score that he did the like the it's not the very first piece in the movie but it's the piece that plays under the credits called the very unassuming day um, i absolutely loved it when he put that together man i was like oh that's so beautiful because it's the just sounds like somebody on the verge of life you know like this is the last moment before life is going to change irrevocably as a score then he told me like i think i got a closing track me and my, uh, my brother are coming up with something. And I think you're going to like it. If you like that very unassuming day, I think you'll like this. And then he handed us 24 karat case of love. So I spun it and listened to it and like rolled a fucking tear, man, because it's just, it sounds like a song, one of your favorite eighties songs that you forgot about, but it never existed until recently. And so I said to bear, when he gave it to me, I wrote him, I was like, this is fucking beautiful bear. You took one of the dumbest things I ever said, because I literally said I got a 24 karat case of love and you redeemed it. You made it the hook in a song, a real earworm of the song. I can't thank you enough. And Bear was like, uh, Kevin, the beauty of that song is the beauty of that statement. The I've got a 24 karat case of love. He's going, that's not cringe. That's how 16 year old boys talk like when they're on the verge of something important and whatnot. He's gone. It had all the earnestness and authenticity of something like a kid at that stage of life would say. So he's like, it, it makes sense as the song. It, it, it kind of sings itself as a sentiment. But I didn't have the heart to tell Bear that like, I wasn't 16 when I said that. I was like 22 when I said 24 karat case of love. But you know, the sentiment is there, he's right. It's like, it is the thing that, young person says man uh, because when you're young everything that's small to people like us now is massive you know like this is everything it's not like how will i pay my mortgage and shit like that it's like will this person go to the movies with me or something so I i'll never be able to thank bear enough like not just for that song which is absolutely fucking banging but the score now i never had a score for my childhood in my head when i think back on moments from my childhood i didn't hear music unless i heard a needle drop song that was in top 40 at the time 
But Bear's score is so rich and so pure and so earnest that now whenever I think back on my past, I hear that music. Now when I drive around like Highlands and Atlantic Highlands, I play that music, man. Because I'm like, he scored my youth. Uh, it's very rare breathing to have somebody be like, this is what your childhood sounded like. And he's right. Okay, so Austin is incredible in the movie. Very quickly, um, can you tell me a little bit about uh, writing this movie with, you know, little, Ke little Kev in mind, but then giving that to Austin and be like, this is yours as well. I tried to give it, um, not to Austin first, but the person he sleeps with, my daughter. Uh, I wrote it and I told Harley, I was like, I want you to play the young me. And she's like, what are you talking about? I was like, let's yentle this shit, man. I was like, you know, mom's always saying you look like a beardless, dickless me. Oh, I didn't have a beard then. I was like, so you could totally fucking play me. And she's like, I'm not doing that. She's like, I have to deal with enough Nepo baby bullshit online. I am not playing young you. So I was like, fair enough. I will choose the guy you sleep with. And Austin, I was way familiar with. They've been dating for five years and stuff. And I'd worked with them in Clerks 3. We also did the TBS um, what was it called? Celebrity show off together during the pandemic. It was like, we did a short com, a short sitcom called a son in lockdown where he played an obnoxious version of himself. So I knew what he was capable of and stuff. And, and, you know, he, he, he has the earnestness where he could play the earnestness of, of, of a young me. And he's not that far removed, you know, in terms of physically and whatnot. So I told Harley, I was like, I, I'm going to give it to Austin. And she's like, that's even fucking worse. She's like, how am I supposed to sleep with this guy? He plays a young version of you. I was like, look, my name is Paul. That's between y'all. I need a guy to play me. And he's perfect. So I, I love him so much, like in the movie, which I've now seen many, many times. Every time I watch it, I discover a new thing that he brought to the table that just makes my heart soar. It, it was one of the best casting decisions I ever made, man. And incredible. It has everything to do with the kid. Like I told the kid in the future, you start sleeping with more actors. Go find me some more leading men <laughs> or women. Either way. Well, thank you so much. The movie's incredible. Uh, thanks for your time. I appreciate you. I've been doing this job for a long time, and this is one of the ones that I've been waiting for since the beginning. Oh, and that means so thank, you. thank you. We'll do it again then. Does anything make you sad? Like what about nuclear war? If the Russians drop the bomb on us today, my mom can't ground me. <laughs>